What's going on today, everybody? Well, I'm having some troubles with the Subaru. Um, I've been working out of town a lot, so I've been driving it a lot at highway speeds, a constant highway speed. Um, and I'm having a lot of oil loss in the engine. And it's not leaking anything. There's nothing on the ground. So where's it going? So today, I'm going to be going through and doing a cylinder leak down test and a compression test on the Subaru to see if we can kind of figure out where we've got a problem, where it's leaking. Well, we've got our cylinder compression test stuff ready, and I also have a new cylinder leak down test. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm starting out with a cold engine. It's best to start with a warm engine, but I wanna check when it's cold and when it's warm to see if I'm having more problems at cold starts or when it's hot. I mean, hot's your operating temperature, but I just wanna do it just to be safe. So first steps first, we gotta go ahead and we gotta remove all the spark plugs, which entails removing all the coils, which entails removing the battery and the air intake, um, your filter, so that we can get to the sides. Now, the driver's side rear one's the biggest pain but both of them are kind of a pain to get to so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna start removing some stuff and getting this ready to do some testing on it here we go we're at our engine we got to take our battery out to get to this side under and then we got to take our air intake and our air box stuff we got to take all that out so we have some room to work because we got to go all the way down and they are deep down in here I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see it on here, but your ignition coil is right down in here. So we gotta go ahead and get some stuff out of our way so we can actually get to it to work on. There we go, now we got a little bit clearer idea on what we're getting after. So here is your ignition coil, and it's held on by a bolt, and you pull those out, and then your spark plug's right behind it. So we'll go ahead, we'll disconnect that, or unbolt it, and then disconnect it, and then pull our spark plugs out. And this is the passenger side, we gotta do the same all the way over on the driver's side. So, important to keep your, your air intake with you, because you'll need your mass sensor. There we go, we've got our ignition coil out, 12 millimeter bolt or a hex, and then it's connected, so I don't want it to be connected because I don't want anything firing off in the vehicle while I'm trying to start it. So pull this tab up, it's a pull out, not a push, and then it just pops right off. Now I like to keep these in order on which way they came out. So I've got my rear and then I've got my front ready to go. So we'll keep them kind of where they need to be. Put them up on the shock tower. Save them for later. Go ahead and we'll do the other side and then we'll start removing these spark plugs. So here's the number four cylinder. And it is a giant pain in the butt to get out because you can't quite get it to come out with the lower. So with it disconnected, you can actually turn this over right here and then f pull it out a lot easier so it gets this it sits in there like that and if you go ahead and you flip it over it allows you to get over the frame rail so we don't have to undo this motor mount that is a huge advantage just figured it out usually I undo the motor mount lift this side of the engine up to get it out but I was able to pull it off rotate it around and get that cup or the connector off of it rotate it all the way around and then pull it out good and bad news all the spark plugs are out and they all look pretty okay now this is one three two four so this is my driver's side front and rear passenger front and rear and you can see both my rears have a little bit more carbon buildup on them than the front two do but 
it's not on the electrode area. I mean, they all look pretty okay. No scars, nothing burnt down, no real problems with them, which is cool. But it means I still don't know where my problem is. So I guess we'll keep chasing. Well, it started pouring down on me, so I got the tent out, but now we are going to go ahead and we've got all of our spark plugs out, all of our ignition coils out. So we're gonna go ahead and we don't want fuel to our car and we don't want it to ignite. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull this last fuse right here. This last fuse is your fuel pump. Uh, there you go, fuel pump. So we're gonna pull this fuse out. There's a little clip right there. Pull that fuse out, we're gonna set it in here. Since I've already disconnected all the ignition coils, it shouldn't be a problem. I shouldn't have a bunch of sparks going, it should just be power to the connectors, which it won't power anything, so that's cool. So I've just gone ahead and I've removed the fuel pump. That's the only one I've, I've removed. So that way we're not dumping a whole bunch of fuel into the engine while we're trying to crank it. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this set up, get our battery back in so we can power it and then give it a couple cranks. Once you get everything ready to where you're starting to do your compression test, you're gonna wanna go ahead and you've got your fuse undone, you've got everything out, you've got your compression tester in the cylinder that you wanna test. Now, it helps to have two people, it's not necessary, but it helps. That way you can look at the gauge or have the other person look at the gauge and tell you what that number is. Have a camera, does the same thing. So what you wanna do, Set your camera up so you can see it. Make sure it's recording so you can look back at it. And then hop in the car. Put the key in the ignition and push your clutch in and put your foot to the floor on your gas pedal. So your clutch is in and your gas is in all the way. And then sit there and crank it. I did 10 times to make it easy, but it's only like, you only need to do it like five or six times. Anyways, 10 made sure that I got as high as it was gonna get and then I got my number. I can go back and look at my footage and make sure I have my number, write it down, and then that way it will, we can look back at it and see if we have a problem between our cylinders. Another thing that's pretty important is you should probably put your MAF sensor or plug your MAF sensor back in, hook your um, intake up so that it's reading that air. You need to read that air for it to start but you also wanna have it on while you're cranking. That's because it's gonna throw a code for you. So if you throw a code, it's gonna take a code reader to get the code off, which is a pain, but if you just plug it in, you won't have the code and you won't have the problem. So preventative maintenance, don't have the code, don't have a problem, just plug it in. everything back together we've got the car idling and we are up to temperature we're right at uh, 192 degrees Fahrenheit so we've got our car running we are up to temperature now it's time to go find some gloves and go ahead and take everything back apart and try it again everything's back to being warm we found ourselves some gloves everything in here now is going to be hot so don't touch it too long or be careful when you touch it. I have my battery kind of hooked up to some jumper cables so I don't have to have it in the car. Um, and it's hooked up to a tender. So that tender is charging my battery. Battery can use to start the car. So we'll go ahead and we will take this stuff back out and then do a test again. Well, now that we got everything put back together, it's all good to go. We got our compression check stuff done, and uh, we'll go over the results, I guess, of the car in the next video. 
So with that, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go crunch some numbers, check some stuff out, do some reading and make sure that everything's fine within tolerances. Check out the the specs and stuff like that, but cars back up and running. We can let it run again and have a good one. Okay, well, if this was helpful at all, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. But if it's helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. Please, please, please don't forget to subscribe. We're trying real hard to hit a thousand subscribers. I want to do it soon. Sooner the better. So, if you would, please, please subscribe. Helps me out a ton. Let's me know that you guys want to keep doing this stuff. Let's me know that I should keep doing this stuff. Um, but yeah, without further ado, I'm going to get out of here. You enjoy the rest of your night. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my night. Peace.